Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Let's Play Planescape Torment with me, your host Tim. I've got about 30 minutes before bed, but it should be enough time to maybe do one of these sensory stones and talk to Quell. We've got the chocolate method. let's give him a talking. And hopefully he'll be a little more forthcoming. Oh, he's really super jealous about, his, about the candy he likes. The mage's expression curdles as he spies your approach. Unbelievable! You've chosen to curse me with your detestable presence once more, you ill-conceived Riki Sod. He pauses his harunjing to eat a small peppermint. I pray you've learned yourself some manners. I've brought you some imported chocolate as a gift. Oh? His demeanor changes in an instant. Oh, very kind of you. Very gentlemanly. May I see? Show him the chocolate closet. He takes it from your hands. Oh, quite rare these are. And most delectable. He bites off a large piece and tucks what's left into his tunic. I did still have some questions for you. He frowns at you, licking the last of the chocolate off his fingers. Who told you to bother me with these inane questions? He says at you accusingly. Come now. What is it you wish to bother me with or be gone? He finishes a malt ball from his sleeve and eats it. Oh, fishes. I'm going to have some candy. Who are you? I am Quell. He holds up his hands imperiously, as if to stop you from introducing yourself. And don't bother to introduce yourself. You must be the most insolent, annoying pest this side of Sigil that I've heard so much about. A true pleasure to meet you. To thank the powers, you couldn't have waited until you had curled up and died, thereby sparing me the pain of being forced to banter words with you. I would gladly trade my formidable sorceress power for but a minor enchantment that would pierce your thick skull and introduce at least the idea of manners. Formidable sorceress powers? Could you teach me? Teach you? <laughs> Are you even a mage? Uh, yes, I am. Oh, what wonders the multiverse holds for Quell today? Come, let me see your spell book. Here you go. He tears it from your grasp and glares at it furiously. What is this trash? I'll tell you. Dung, 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 dung. How do you even pluck the spells from these standard, these stained pages? Have you been using this book as a bar towel? So soaked in spirits, glue, and blood it is. Do you not care for your spell book? How can I teach someone who doesn't even respect the art? It holds my spells. Its appearance is unimportant. Ridiculous. Preposterous. A most laughable notion, if I've ever heard one. Who taught you the art? A midwife in Rackpicker Square, Mabeth. Then shamed be the name... Then shame be their name to be spreading such ineffable twaddle. Look at these spells. What is this owl crap that they've been spilling out? Sully magics with hoodoo names and mumbo jumbo wash? Trivial, tiny, flickering candle-like magics with grandiose names? So why does appearance matter? Your spellbook's appearance should reflect your respect for the power it holds. That trashy little book of yours is suitable only for the basest of words. True spells should be recorded in rare, precious inks on sheets of vellum edged with gold leaf. Everything in its proper place, or not at all. He needs to hop about madly. Proper place. Proper place. I see. Can you teach me or not? He shuts his eyes and massages his temples for a moment. Finally, he speaks in a cold, level tone. It is obvious I can teach you nothing. I may, however, have some spells you might wish to purchase from me. Would you care to see them, then? Hmm? Yeah, I would. We were just talking that we need some spells. Let's see what he's got. And, wow, he's charging a lot of money for these, so he's not too happy with me. Oh, Chain Lightning. Hello. Level 6 spell. Alright, well, we're going to take one of these. Blade Storm, a level 7 spell. Powered Blind, Identify. I really just needed this one at the moment. I probably should buy a Blade Storm. That will be almost all my cash, I think, won't it? I don't have enough for both. So, can I sell him anything? No, he's only interested in selling me things. Alright, well, let's let's buy Chain Lightning. Oh, Chain Lightning Storm. Effect 50 by 50 foot area. 
As a man looked up and cried to the heavens, so it responded. Judgment rains down from the skies when this spell is invoked. Giant bolts which strike and chain small uh, shall comprise a swarm of death. Giant lightning bolts strike down all hostile creatures on screen for 7 through 70 points of damage. Successful saving throw reduces it to half damage. It's in my spell book. That's pretty awesome. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Oh! It was level 5 spell I was looking for. A different level 5 spell. Well, at least we have a level 6 for the future. No, 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 no. Wasn't I, wasn't I talking to you? Quell glances around him as you approach. Blast, nowhere to hide. Well, out with it. What do you wish of me now? Hmm? He plops a candy to his mouth and looks at you expectantly. I have some questions. He rolls his eyes, indicating for you to continue with a wave of his hand. What do you know of Ravel Puzzlewell? At the mention of her name, he swallows the candy he's sucking on with a loud gulp, wincing in pain. Oh, what's to tell? Why tell at all? Such things, such tales are best left in dusty books and in the attics of old men's minds. Evil, evil. Such a name, such a name, and such dark tales from about it, like flies on a corpse. But just the same, I need you to tell me. He rolls his eyes, plopping another candy to his mouth. She's a night hag, my boy, who came to sigil. All evil and cackles she was, alive with her shadow magic, ready to butt heads with the Lady of Pain. Barmy. Barmy, barmy old hag. Only succeeding in getting herself mazed. She's likely dead by now. Shadow magic. Yes, yes, yes. He seems uneasy about speaking of her. Ravel dabbled. No, uh, not dabbled, but excelled in all schools of magic. She knew shadow magics. Magics of illusion, and shadow substance, shadows, residues of dead things. Oh wow, maybe she's behind what's been attacking me, so she's behind my condition. How might I find her? How might you- what?! His candy rolls right out of his mouth into the, the hiles. Before you can so much as look at it, he snatches it up and pops it back in his mouth, giving you a dirty look. Why- Why would you ask such a thing? Are you mad?! What could you possibly want with such an evil creature? She knows something about my past. Doubtful. She was mazed many centuries ago. Gone. Pen in the dead book she is. And even if she were some way, somehow, still clutching to life with her blackened, bloody talons, what could she possibly know about you? If she wasn't the spitting image of a cackling evil, that is and was even willing to help you. I'll just have to hope she's alive and will help me then. But unless she's six teats and her swollen tummy, what a flickering candle of hope hurled into the howling winds of pandemonium that is. Flicker, flicker, swoosh! Don't be any more the fool than you need to be. I must still seek her out, whether she's dead or alive. So if she's dead, as she most likely is, then what's the plan, I ask? everything all figured out, do you? Quell, Quell's just blowing words out of his pits. Oh, sorry about that. I thought that was a, the narrator. Let me, let me do this one again. So if she's dead, as she most likely is, then what's your plan, I ask? Do you have everything all figured out, do you? Quell's just blowing words out of his pits, nonsense, nothing? What do you plan to do if she's in the dead book, eh? And what do you think I should do? The first brilliant question you've asked. Me? I think you should give up this clueless idea of entering mazes and chatting with night hags and lope back into whatever crypt you crawled out of. It makes far more sense than fishing for the lady's anger it does. Can you tell me how to get to her maze? Lunatic! Madman! Of Alcove! Have you not listened to a word I've said? She's imprisoned in an interdimensional maze for trying to best the Lady of Pain. That means she's at least ten times as barmy as you, and at least a hundred times more powerful. She's also most likely dead, 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 thrice dead, and if by some happenstance she isn't, she'll make you dead. Look, I understand, alright, but I still really need your help because I need to reach her. Can you help me or not? Coco's quiet, chewing on his lip. After a moment, he fishes around in his tunic for a mint, then plops it in his mouth. You're serious. Serious now. 
Why so serious? So... Bator... Bent. So mule stubborn. He sighs. Well, Clueless. Born Clueless. Die Clueless. Yes. Updated my journal. All mazes have portals. This much I know to be true. A way in, a way out. This is how the lady fashions them. I do not know the portal, its location, or even its form. But I am told its key is a piece of ravel. A piece of ravel? The ravel is mazed, and how am I supposed to... Then you'll have to make do. Find something that has ravel's taint in it, mayhap. That's all I know. All. Oh, I know what it is. Bother me no more about it. If you want to go pestering someone about something like that, go to the broth of, yup, of slicking intellectual lusts. One of the ladies there is bound to have met someone who knows something that'll help. Yeah. Yup. You know who has the ladies tainted in her? The one girl who is supposedly the daughter of Ravel. She'd have her blood. Maybe a drop of her blood will work. Many thanks for your help. Farewell. Updated my journal. All right, let's try another sensory stone. Might as well. Hi. All right, let's get this. Look, the base of this aquatic blue stone has been sculpted, so it appears to have melted into the pedestal. It rests up. Oh, upon the pedestal, it rests upon. A stream of perfect azure tears drips down the sides, framing the inscription beneath the pedestal. Longing. Begin the sensation. As you place your hands upon the stone, its surface ripples beneath your touch. A chill washes over your arms, like plunging your hands into a mountain stream. Alright, let's close my eyes and merge ourselves into the experience. As you close your eyes, you blink and reopen them. Your eyes are brimming with tears and you are overcome with a terrible sensation of drowning. As if this, as the sensation rolls through you, there is a stirring in your breast, a hunger, poisonous like serpent, biting into your heart, until you feel a, as if your breast will explode. You want desperately to steady yourself, focus, but all that comes to your eyes are tears. Wipe them away. You raise your hand whip away your tears. Your hands are soft, delicate woman's hands. They brush the stray tears from your cheek, and you cup them in your hands, each of the tears like jewels shimmering in the lights. Turn to examine the lights. The lights are cast by candle globes that drift through your sanctuary. You have come to this place to gather your thoughts, to reflect on the past with an eye toward the future, to cleanse the mind before the coming journey, yet you cannot concentrate. Your thoughts remain in the present. Trapped here by the terrible feeling that rides in your breast. What did he mean? Close your eyes and sigh. You close your eyes, but his words echo in your mind a hundred, a thousand times. Will he ever return? The sound is a whisper, an echo. Only you. Only you. Yet you hesitated at the brink of time's door, and he must have thought you afraid to go. But you were not. You were afraid to stay. And the fear. The serpent rises in your breast again, its fangs biting into your heart, filling it to bursting with its poison. The tears come again, running down your cheeks in streams, his words echoing. Echo. Only you. Only you. Your eyes snap open. It is his voice. You whirl. And you gasp. He stands, powerful in the shadows, and he strides into the light on drifting candled globes, and you feel the serpent writhing and dying. He returned, his face stern, but somewhere in those features, you can almost see his pleasure at seeing you. After all, he returned for you. Echo. Oh, oh. God. This is Dionara. Oh. Dionara is the ghost girl who said she loved us when we first woke up on the slab in the mortuary. 
and we had told her we loved her beyond all others. So, we must be seeing myself show up. Only you can help me, Dianara. But it was wrong for me to ask you for my help. You speak, Dianara, yet you, it is you. Gray-skinned like a statue, striding from the light. Are you that scarred? Your body looks like it has been bathed in knife blades, the wounds, the tattoos, horrible, yet you see through Dionara's eyes, and she, and she sees... How can she see you in such a way? She puts a cloak over your features. She sees you in, much, in such light, such terrible longing. Light. For she... How can she feel such? Oh. Mmm. Try to be focused. Brace yourself. Hold on to the experience. You feel your vision tear... Your vision tearing, doubling until you are... That m man striding from the light. It is you, but not you. You feel yourself being torn. It is Dionara's experience, but at the same time, it is also yours. And you... What? Echo. I ask too much of you to accompany me, Dionara. I have no right to place you in such danger for my sake. So I'm hearing myself say that to her. It is your words, but they are a surgeon's words, chosen with cold skill, without a trace of emotion. With every word, you feel yourself sneering inside, knowing what the stricken girl will see next through her long, longing, stained eyes, and who... Are you that person, that man twisting her with your words, not knowing how powerful they are to her? Like bolts from a ballista, piercing her breast, her... Yet, she sees only relief in your at your return. How... How can she feel... And not know you mean to... I have come to ask your forgiveness, Dionara. I shall return to you as soon as I am able. Your vision tears again, doubling and bleeding until you are facing yourself again, trying desperately to speak, to warn Dionara that this is not a man, but a creature that kills for his own needs. He doesn't care about you. Dionara, you are a tool to him. A tool he needs to... But Dionara speaks, and you can't stop her. I would place myself in a thousand dangers, embrace eternity for you, my love. I am not afraid. Listen to me. I will accompany you through the planes themselves should oh, though the planes themselves should bar though the planes themselves should bar the way you feel yourself shattering relief and satisfaction his satisfaction at her words knowing she would say them always knowing and her admission of love is like the slamming of a portcullis across your heart trapped she is yours, but you must be certain. So you drive the nail home. The way is dangerous. You will have to be strong, far stronger than you are now. Swimming through her mind, relief, the wave of relief at the end of longing, yet longing for him more at his words, not noticing his manipulations. All you need to be is strong, and his path shall be as one with yours. Your thoughts are like fires, for you can be strong, stronger than he knows. You know no fear. You would die for him. I can be strong, my love. I will. Her words slide off him like water. The serpent in her breast, the one piercing her heart with its poison, has been replaced by this serpent in the flesh. She sees nothing of this, and his next words are planned, carefully, so carefully. I can't say if we'll succeed, Dionara, but I'll do my best to protect you. And I will expect nothing less of the same from you. You may be required to make some sacrifices. At that final terrible word, you feel yourself being torn apart. He means her harm. He means you harm. For you are her, and he means to hurt her. 
yet you need her to be harmed, and you want to scream. Scream at her that she is in danger. Run. Run, Dionara, for his eyes unmake all things. Of course, my love. Life is sacrifice. This I have learned. You... she... her... You speak the words, and in it, you feel yourself dying inside. You are a spectator, and you have watched a woman die, for the words are a death sentence. Yet still, still she speaks unheeding, uncaring. I left a legacy in my father's keeping, my love. Ask for the sixth, the third, the K, and the S. In it, I bequeath everything to you. It's not much, but with it I left... Updated my journal. You. Him. A wave of irritation washes over you. You clench your teeth to prevent the irritation from crossing your features. She Must she always continue to prattle, even when you do not prompt her? Must she... But no. No, keep the irritation inside. Only a trace slips out. Come now. I cannot die, Dionara. There is no need for such foolishness. Her. You. She is overcome with fear. Fear that revolts you. And the fear wells up inside her. You. You as you watch him frown. And you hasten to correct him. He must know the reasons and know the wisdom behind them so he is impressed with your planning. Speak. Speak before he turns away. I... No, I often act foolishly, my love. But you said yourself that you can forget things if you're badly hurt. There are things in the legacy that could help you remember should you forget yourself. Updated my journal. She, you, coldly regard her through your eyes, tracing your gaze along her furrowed brow, wrinkled with worry, desperation. She has acted as you expected. Yet, there is something in what she says. Perhaps. Yet, I hope nothing in this legacy is of value. I do not want you to leave any things here in some safe that could be of some use on our journey. Her illusion is shattered. Just for a moment you watch, silent, as the emotion falls to the ground, splintering like silver glass. Of some use. Such a casual statement. Yet even Dionara sees. And you hope, just for a moment, you hope that she sees him for what he is. The serpent. The serpent. And your hope dies. As in Dinar's eyes, the emotion is rebuilt, the slivers being drawn from the ground, the illusion rebuilt, but the slight sliver of pain remains. He thinks you have done something foolish, yet you did it for him. You must, must make amends, but how? You must convince him the legacy is unimportant, but it isn't, it isn't, it's everything. The legacy, my love, it, it just has a few things to help you, help you remember. The scythe of words falls on Dionara, so quick, so sharp, you cannot follow its arcing path. A legacy. The things you do, Dionara, such romantic gestures. No matter. No! She, you, Dionara, you have driven him away again. Like you did the night before. You feel the serpent stirring again, reborn, curling around your heart. There is the softest of hisses, yet he does not hear. Would... would you wish... Is this me? Hold on. Okay. Would... Would you wish to leave a legacy, my love? For yourself? Or for anyone you would want to? It might help you remember if you left something for yourself. Or for the ones you loved. The word scythe falls again. Terrible and swift. Yet this time the illusion holds. And the serpent is cloaked. The serpent is cunning. And it shall not reveal itself until it strikes. A legacy for myself? Not likely. The things I would leave for myself would not be safe in some advocate's office, Dionara. But enough of this. I must leave. He is leaving. You must make him remain. And the experience swirls around you. Terrible. The spiraling toward the final scene. The question you... She wants to ask. Don't ask it. Dionara, don't ask it. Be silent. Oh. She wants to ask if I love her. My love, before you go... His anger, his irritation. What now, girl? What now, you mewling banshee? Before I... Hold on. Before I go... It looks like I'm in no danger of that. Come, Dianara. Can't these questions wait for, for the morn? There is much... She, you... 
She is desperate, drowning. Say it, say it, say it. And she, you speak it. Do you want me to come with you, my love? The rush of emotion dies in your mind. This is the end. The words he, you are about to speak are true. But the truth is not the truth she sees. There are no lies, only cold calculations. Of course he wants you to come with him, Dionara. You understand it clearly. Too clearly. He has invested too much in the poor girl to let her go. Of course, Dionara. I would not have asked you to come with me if I did not want your company. You know how I feel about you. There was a cold silence in his mind, then a hissing of a thought. A response sharp and deadly like a dagger's blade. The lie comes swiftly, unburdened by emotion. I love you, Dionara. And you want to scream as you feel the lie wash over her like a radiance. But it is a shadow of truth. A serpent's kiss, and he means you harm, and she can't see. You want to call out, but she is crying with joy, even as... Even as... And so we cry with joy, with frustration, and with despair. The emotion washes over you, like you are drowning, drowning. And you need to speak, you long to speak. But you cannot tear yourself away from the experience. And you scream. Scream as you tear your hands from the stone. Bloody tears rushing from your eyes, running in streams down your arms, your hands, to coat the stone. Blood. Her blood. And you can't warn her. And you can't stop crying. A few seconds, uh, everyone. Okay. And suddenly, Fall from Grace is there, and her touch is gentle like silk, and she brushes the tears from your eyes, even as you feel the screams welling up in you, and she shushes you, cradling your, f cradling your face, oh god, <laughs> through your bloody tears. I... I can't bear it. I couldn't stop her. I wanted to, but I couldn't do anything. Fall from Grace looks into your eyes, and she nods sadly in understanding. And that is the nature of longing. The desire for that which you cannot change or possess. She studies you, withdrawing her hand, now soaked in your blood. Will you be alright? Yes. I just need a moment. Very well. Fall from Grace steps back. We will continue when you are ready. Take a breath, a breath. Try to collect your thoughts. As much as you want to hurl the memory of the experience from you, you hold it fast, because you know it's important to remember it. It was you in that experience. It was Dionara's experience. But because it was you, your memories flooded you, and you could feel both sides at once. Who were you? Who was that that shade of you. Whoa. Good God. Done. Oh. Whew. That was freaking sad. I'm oh, sorry, everyone. I, I needed a moment there. All right. Uh, I... Are all these stones about me? Serve. We've had two that a really pleasure. involve me in here. Man, my goodness. Wow. Oh. I wonder if the vision, you know, how it's narrated to you, changes if your alignment's different. So our alignment is neutral good. If we were chaotic evil, would we still have reacted the same way to seeing that it, those images like if we sold people into slavery or murdered our companions or did horrible things to them which you can indeed do in this game would we have experienced that in a different manner I wonder the inscription around the base of this sensory stone indicates that it holds the experience week long hunting trek across the forests of Aborea all right, let's begin this one. Doesn't sound like it's going to be 
Sad? You are standing in the circle of white tents deep in the woods. Somewhere. The trees around you are, by far, the largest you've ever seen. Suddenly, though, there's an odd prickling sensation at the back of your skull. Your surroundings melt into a colorless smear, then slowly resolve into what looks like the interior of a large gray sphere. Across from you stands a figure almost identical to yourself. His eyes flash in a half-darkness. A mad smile splits his features. I knew you would come. Greetings? Oh, greetings, greetings. So good to see you, he sneers. I bid your murderous tongue to be silent. That's right, murderous. Your pretend innocence is laughable. Who are you? Oh, don't you know? Didn't all the filthy, lying, thrice-be-damned journals tell you who I am? Those journals that were so conveniently left for me when I awoke? Those journals that called me an incarnation? Ha, huh, I burned them all. I did all that I found. So, you're one of my earlier incarnations. He crosses his arms and looks away. If you'd put stock in such trash... Yes, what did those lying journals say? They spoke lies, 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 and nothing more. Filth about a man who forgets himself, other incarnations, of preserving their experiences and writing so later lives could benefit. Thieves! It's my life, mine! You all want to steal my body and you won't have it! Where am I? Oh, this! He just is around him, snickering. <laughs> this is just a little trap, is all. I realize that killing you body thieves might not be enough. I might have to trap you, ensnare you for eternity. You may have realized by now that there's no way out of the sensory stone. Your mind is locked here. You'll note the rather sparse surroundings I've left for you. All to help the madness set in. Good and quick while your flesh rots away. He chuckles evilly. Well, I have some questions then. Your earlier inclination crosses his arms and looks away indignantly. Save for a few more tufts of hair on his head, he's identical to you. Even his arms have most of the tattoos yours do. Oh, he's recent. Did you put those tattoos on? No! He looks distraught. That one incarnation, that practical one did. I've tried to burn them off, but the skin regenerates with the tattoos still on them. I have tried to tear them off, stain them with acid. I hate them. Let's read them. His eyes grow wild. Stop that! Stop reading me! He tries to cover himself with his arms, turning away from you. I'm going to keep reading them. They're all over his bodies, and it seems to annoy him greatly. Oh, crap. That was the wrong click. Fine. How'd you make this trap? Can't tell you. It'll never be replicated. The magics used in its creations were lost, even to me. Clever it is, though. One experience hidden beneath the other, so that no flesh but my own would set it off. Oh, it's probably linked to the tattoos, then. So there were actually two sensations within this stone. Yes. That of the Aborian hunting trip, and that of this trap. He looks suddenly wary of you. Why? Try to force your way into the other's other sensation through sheer willpower. What? What are you doing? Stop that! I'm going to continue. You at last push yourself into the surface experience, the Aborian hunt, and end the sensation before being pulled back into the trap. Nice, but I want those tattoos. Oh, darn it! Okay, well, so much for free tattoos. The inscription around the base of the sensory stone indicates that it holds experience. Alright, um... Should you touch it, though, you'll be drawn back into that insane early incarnation's trap. Oh, that's a shame! Ah, oh well. Too late. Alright. Alright, so that was... Wow, so all three dealt with me some way. And all three... This one was an actual sensory previous experience. The other one has two. One was a trap, and the other one also was a message for me. Wow, that was fascinating. Done. Alright, so... We need to go to the Godsmen and the Brothel Slicking Intellectual Lusts. Let's Done. go over to the Godsmen uh, first. We could do the... Hmm, we're right here. But I like, to, I like to rest and recover some spells. So that means going over this direction anyway. I, 
didn't actually think you could get into the Godsman location. So that would be the lower ward. Oh! I'm gone. No, that was in the other location. Uh, the upper ward contains the Advocate's office, which I'll want to visit to see what Dionara left me. Wow, so Dionara loved me, but I did not love her at all. She was just a tool for that version of me. Oh, rest. All right. Rest. Okay, so. Hello, Gilspur. I like to buy a place to sleep. Okay, so let's see if we can get into the Godsman's office. Maybe they have a job I can do to prove myself to them or something? Oh, we should save the game. And actually, I'm going to start and stop the recording really quick so I don't lose this. That was amazing. Those, uh, those sensory stones. The second one. Holy crap. Okay. So, can we... How do we get in here? I mean, we, do we have to be a member of them? We see a burly, bored-looking guard. Stay your business, please. What is this place? You are in front of the Great Foundry, home to the Believers of the Source. But what is the Great Foundry? Aside from being home to the Believers of the Source, it is also one of the largest foundries known to mortal existence. Much traffic passes through these gates. We take orders from all across the plains. Currently, we are not accepting any further orders, as most of our craftsmen are either working on a new project or commissioned for the next several months on smaller orders. What this means in practical terms is that you're not getting in unless you have a receipt for work to pick up or have urgent business inside. Well, crap. How do I get that? I do a version business. State the nature of your requirements, sir. I, I'm just looking around. Then I'm certain you won't mind just passing along. May I come in? Not until you can demonstrate that you have business here. Well, crap. We don't. I have no idea how to get into that location. I don't feel like fighting them to get in. The air is quite bracing here. <laughs> Indeed it is, Fall from Grace. Wow. Okay. Let's... Uh, Done. I guess we'll ask around for a little bit. See if someone has any work for me. So, alright. Let's go into the structures and see. I don't... I can't imagine anyone has any work. I'm gone. So this is the something of a thousand worlds. Ninth world, Vault of Ninth World. Thri twice welcome to the Vault of Ninth World. How may I serve you on this fine day, said Jillian? Uh, I like to store something. I'm sorry. We seem to be full up at the moment. Can I do anything else for you? Alright, so I've already done this. Farewell. We at the Vault of Ninth World value your business. Please return. Oh, maybe. Maybe some. Maybe the thing Dionara has left me is used here or something? Alright. Let's try in here. Maybe this gentleman has some work. This is the printing press. I'm gone. I think I was able to ask for work earlier. Here's your receipt. Thank you. Here's another coin. If he does have receipts, maybe he can help us. Well, if it isn't the devourer of time himself, do you actually want something this time? Yes. Do they have to do with work? What is this place? He looks sharply at you. See some print description of his pen. Are you entirely dim? It's a printing shop. I print things here. Look around you. I print. What do you print? Books, pamphlets, handbills, words, letters, whatever, he amends. Though I don't have any racy prints, and I won't fulfill any pers perversions you might want, nor do I care to ask. Can I ask you something else? Farewell. No, no work for me here. I'll have to check my journal off screen. Alright, so this is getting me nowhere. We'll still ask everyone in this area. Then I guess we'll go inside. 
the market. Maybe so maybe someone there or one of the the knights might be able to help me. The guards inside the market. What's up? Right. Yes. Done. Come on, nameless one. It's not getting lost. Hello, Lenny. You see Lenny. He smiles at your approach. Hello, Cutter. I heard about Byron and couldn't be happier. He grins. He grins. What can I do for you? I had some questions. I've told you everything I know, Cutter. I don't have any more answers for you. All right, farewell. All right, so Lenny can't help us get in. Not that I would think he would. Oh, maybe the... Oh, maybe this gentleman can help me? I'm kind of nervous talking to Lothar. I'm surprised I remember his name. But we're going to go up or, or downstairs anyway. Oh no. That's it. I'm game. gone. Oh, oh, thank goodness. All Let's right. say the game crashed. I think it crashed once here already. Let's say the game again. Just so I don't want to we do some of this stuff. Receipt and a reason. Alright, so we, we talked to all the skulls already, so we're just gonna go right to Lothar and see what if he can help us. I'm gone. Hmm? Right. Yeah. I think, therefore, Very I am. Well. I think. Hello? You again. What do you want from old Lothar now? I've given you your skull friend and your answers. I warn you, I haven't all day to attend to you. His gaze falls on you with the force of a sledgehammer. Can I ask you more questions? Keep it quick, scarred one. I cannot tarry all day. Why am I immortal? Your mortality, your soul, if you will, that which allows you to live and die, is gone from you. It was stripped from you by magical means, by the night hag Ravel Puzzlewell. Your mortality is the key to your existence. When you find it, you will find your answers. Tell me about Ravel. I think we've already done this already, so thanks, Lothar. So he can't help me get in there. I'm assuming that's where I need to go. Uh, being lost kind of stinks. I don't want to waste too much of your guys' time, so I think... I think if no one here Done. has anything new for me, then... I guess we'll give up this quest at the moment, and we will go back to the brothel of slicking intellectual lusts. Hey, Gilspur. Um, I have some questions for you. If you want, friend, time and words are money, so keep it snappy. Who are you? What do you do? What well, can you tell me the godsmen? Ah, a group of people close to my heart. They say we are all our own gods. And we have the potential for godliness within our spirits. From the lowest beggar to the highest king. We all nurse gods in our breasts. Who could think of something finer? Uh, the arcanists. <laughs> Good one. A fine answer, he chuckles. <laughs> Another question for you. Do-do-do. Do you know of any jobs that need doing? I certainly do, friend. I have a little errand for you to run. If you'll take it, it'll net you 50 coins. All you need to do is run this hand build down to the print shop and ask Scoffall Pen to print up 100 copies for me. Here, take it. She has a crumpled piece of, crumpled piece of paper into your notes, uh, into your hands. All right, thanks. Updated my journal. All right, well, it's something to do. Something different. I don't see how this is going to help help mess the plot, though. It's probably just a small side plot. Well, I can't talk to him. He's right across the table. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I have some questions for you, Scofflaw. Uh, do they have to do with work? Yes. Guildspur asked me to deliver a handbill to you, so you can print up 100 copies. He takes the handbill from you, looks it over, and says, I'll have it for him later. Go tell him. He turns back to his desk. Farewell, then. 
I'm gone. Well, I guess we earned 50 coins. Done. I could... <sighs> so a long time ago, I once failed a pickpocket attempt. And endless Harmonium Guards show up. I have a hunch if I actually try to break down the doors of that location to get to the portal, that I would end up uh, fighting endless Godsmen. And it occurs to me right now that the no, getting access to the portal is useless Awaiting order. if we don't have the key. So I think we will go back to the brothel. Once again, once again, you come to me once again. There must be something I can do for you, my brother, Dream... Uh, my brother, Darren, cannot, eh? Ha! Ah, that handbill's printed. It's printed? Oh, terrific. I knew you were the man for the job. Here, take this message to Keldor of Durian at the Foundry. I'm sure you'll be glad to receive it. And you'll be glad of 100 coins you get in return. Oh, thank you. Updated oh, holy journal. crap! Really? This is how you get in? All right. Is that how you get in? This is a note from Guildspur has asked you to deliver to Kelder of Durian in the Great Foundry. It looks like it's a private note, but you don't seem to have any scruples about reading it. Upon further examination, it appears that it's just a bill for Guildspur promotional services. You're a little disappointed that it's not something more exciting. All right, uh, do we go in? Can we come back in here? I'm assuming we could come back in here, right? Was this quest available to us before? I don't remember this. Hello. I have a message from Keldor from Giltspur the Auctioneer. Thank you, sir. Uh, you'll find him in the Great Godsman Hall. He opens the gate for you. Thanks. Holy crap! Those are military picks. Wow, those are massive ones. So, I'm, I'm sorry gone. about this. I want to explore around here. I've never been here before. All right. I mean, I've been in the lower ward, but I've never actually gotten into the Godsman place before. It doesn't look like there's anything to find. Yeah, I can't walk up that way. All right, let's let's walk in. Done. Oh, this is an awesome. Do it again? Hold on, I need to save this for the sound effects. Foundry sounds. Done. I'm gone. You see a drab hiver holding crates around. You can't even tell you can't even tell this poor sod sex. What do you want from me? Just a couple of answers. Ask away. Who are you? Why? With the takers? I already paid by taxes. The takers, who are they? You know, the taxmen of the city? What? Are you clueless? I have to get back to work. Alright. I forgot where we're supposed to go. <laughs> all right. We're gonna explore, I guess, all the foundry. That's what this place must be. This place is amazing. I love the sound effects. You see a competent, somewhat poor-looking guard. Greetings, sir. May I be of assistance? Where's the clerk's office? Just south of the main foundry, sir. You'll find an office with a desk in it. That's the clerk's office. What's behind those guarded doors? Uh, I'm afraid that's a secret, sir. Even from our valued faction members. Unless you're involved in the project itself, or unless you receive authorization from the high ups, we can't allow you in. Oh, where can I find the high ups? Either Sandoz or Keldor should be able to aid you in this matter. Keldor is in the main meeting hall, just to the door on the right side of the main foundry. Sandoz can usually be found in the rooms to the rear of the hall. Thanks. Farewell. I'm gone. Holy crap! 
What are they working on? I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. You see a slab-stomached man with thick arms and a scraggly beard. He smells as if he hasn't washed in ages, and his breath doesn't do much for your breakfast. He's in the process of ordering around subordinates as you approach him, and he deals a quick cuff to the ear of one of them. He turns to face you, hitching up his belt. What do you want? Uh, question? You want answers? Like what? Who are you? Third in the Gray, supervisor for this yard. My job it is to make sure that my laborers get their jobs done, and to make sure people like you don't distract them. They work little enough as it is, little sods, and they manage to lose the rest of the day in the idleness if I weren't here. I'm tough, but I'm fair. Ask anyone. Why did they call you the Gray? Because I'm covered in soot most of the time from those blasted furnaces. It's a nickname my laborers have given to me. Out of affection, no doubt. No doubt. That's right, they do. They know if they don't, they'll get what's coming to them. <laughs> I'll have some other questions. <laughs> no doubt indeed. The only answer is like what? Tell me about the godsmen. Uh, they took me in and trained me to be what I am today. And I got to thank them for that. They took my raw talent and shaped it into skill. I tell ya, I'm a favorite of the Factals. And someday he'll show everyone just how important I am to this organization. They tell me that everyone has godliness in them. It's true for me. I think I'm closer than most folks to tell you the truth. That gives me the right to act like a god, and to expect total devotion from my inferiors. I'm learning to take power and move mountains with my belief in myself. When I rule the cosmos, I can bet I'll remember every one of the Burks who stood in my way. That's, um... That's really interesting. I have some other questions. Yeah, like what? I... Uh, actually, I don't. Thank you. I don't need these to forge. see a short woman with slight horns in her forehead and ears that curve sharply back on her skull. She smells faintly of sulfur, even over the reek of the foundry's fires. Greetings! What can I do for you? Who are you? I'm Alyssa Teed, a tailed supervisor for this area, this area being the main foundry area, the Great Foundry, where much of our current public work takes place. The foundry is larger than this, of course. But we have a large contract we're working on, and we've been sworn to secrecy. So most of the work area is off limits. My apologies. I understand. I have some other questions. More questions? What are they? What's going on here? We've taken a huge and very, very secret contract. One that is taking up practically all of our resources. We maintain a smaller operation for the day-to-day -day items of our other orders. But right now, the Foundry is devoted to fulfilling our contract. Don't bother asking about it, because I won't tell you. You seem very firm about this. Very well. I had some another question for you, though. I'm looking for the pickup office. I have an item waiting for me. I don't, actually. We'll ask about that anyway. Uh, it's that office with the desk. You should be sitting right behind it. Another question for you? I like to use the forge. Certainly. Let's make sure you have the proper items for it. Protection from the flames, tongs, hammer, and of course your iron ore. Where would I get those items? If you can't find them lying around somewhere, then you'll have to buy them from the clerk. For a nominal price, of course. Alright, thank you. Farewell. I wonder if we have to use the forge later on. Maybe we have to craft the key. We have to do something, or I don't know. I don't know what we're doing here, everyone. Alright. Alright, so there's several huge doors. Of which I guess only this one. Is this one I want? We see a competent, somewhat poor looking guard. Greetings, sir. Might be of assistance. What's behind those guarded doors? I'm a 
afraid that's secret, sir. Even from our valued faction members, unless you're involved in the project itself. Oh, okay. So, farewell. Oh, I thought he was talking about the door he's standing by. That seems to be their answer for everything. I don't know what door he's talking about, everyone, so I'm going to save the game really quick. Let's see if we can get right. right. Locked. Alright, so that's not the door I want. Maybe this is the door. Oh, there's a little passage here. I didn't even notice it. So maybe all these doors are locked and off limits. a wizened old man with trembling hands and a cunning face. He looks you over carefully and speaks. <sighs> Haven't I seen you before? You seem familiar to me somehow. I suppose it's possible. Never forget a face. You don't come to me. Ah, oh, debate are with it. Who are you? Me? I'm Natalie, Godsman fighter extraordinaire size. At least I used to be. Now I'm a clerk in the foundry, breathing in the sooty air and hasting my dying day along. Well, that's a pity. I had some other questions for you. Alright, nothing else. Alright, this, this is the person I'm here to see. And you know what? I think we'll stop here, everyone. So thank you for watching. And when we come back, I guess we'll explore more of the forge. The Great Foundry. Or all that we can explore, which will just be, I guess, this area. Maybe the jump we can see is here. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the hall. And I'll see you guys then. So thank you for watching, and take care.